Hi everybody, Pat Huntoon here, and today we're going to be painting with Distress Oxide Reinkers. And what I love about this technique is when you paint with them and you get that watercolory look, it also has a faded quality to it that just doesn't happen with other inks. So you should always have these on hand because if you've bought Distress Oxide inks, you should always buy, or any ink pad, you should always buy the reinker at the same time because when it dries out, it's always at the most inconvenient time. So I have two that we're gonna to use today. We're gonna to use Twisted Citron and Picked Raspberry. We're going to be using Versifying Claire and Nocturne ink. Um, this ink is amazing, this Versifying Claire. I've, I've just fallen in love with this. And then we're going to be using Technique Junkies SS075 Watermelon Melon Summer. This is a set of three. We're going to be using the watermelon, and then when I finish it off, I'm going to be using one of the two phrases. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is start with a piece of watercolor paper. And I have a cheap piece of watercolor paper, paper here and my new bar magnet from um, my Sweet Petunia. Make sure it's on there. Now my paper is bigger than my piece because I pre-cut my watercolor paper in advance, it's just easier to use it out of the container. And I just wanna show you with this VersaFine Clear, look at how deep and dark that, that um, inks that. Well, VersaFine Clear is a pigment ink, and whenever you use a pigment ink, you do need to dry it if you're going to uh, move forward or watercolor with it, but it is a very fast drying ink. So I'm gonna hit this real quick with my heat tool. Take that out of there, look at how beautiful it is, and how black. I just love the black. I think it's just, actually I love all the colors, but that's the black. So I'm gonna heat this quick. So we're gonna start with the Twisted Citron Distress Oxide Reinker. And anytime you hear this, that's a ball bearing in there. And you, anytime you have a ball bearing in anything, they're telling you that they want you to shake it up before you use it. So I'm gonna shake that up. And I'm just gonna take it and put it right on my work surface. A couple of dots. I don't need much for this color. I can always add more. And then I'm going to take a water brush and just pick it up with my water brush. Now my water brush happens to be damp because I was just using it uh, for another sample. But you can use a, a dryish water brush with water in there. And then you're just going to paint. Now this one I'm just going to paint all of the bottom stripes. And I'll do that in quick time. Okay, so I have all of the outer rinds painted, and I'm just going to take a paper towel. I guess I could take a bigger piece of paper towel, but I'm going to take a paper towel piece and get a lot of that color off of there. And then because if you've ever looked at a watercolor rind, it's dark green and then it gets lighter green before you get to the pink or red. So I'm just going to take my brush. I'm just going to move, push some water in there, and just move a little bit of color to the top. And you don't want too much water, but, and you want to be able to to hit it with a paper towel as you go along. So I'm just, see how I'm just pushing that up just a little bit. So I just want a little bit lighter and if you need a little bit more color, go back to your color on, your, on the work surface. So I'm going to do my next color, which is picked raspberry. And I got some on the side of the package here last time when I was putting it away. And again, you hear the ball bearings, so you need to shake it a little bit. And then I'm just going to put this down on the table. I'm going to put a little more on this because we actually are going to use more of the pink. I'm going to take my good water brush. And with this one, I'm going to be doing the inside of the watermelons. I'm going to go on all of the watermelons. I'm going to do the inside right up to the edge there where I did the other one. Try to not overlap them too much. Let me make sure you can see this without my hand being in the way. Paper towel close at hand in case you go over the edge. And I'm going to do a few of these where I'm going to do the whole edge. Like if you do that, you want to hit that with a paper towel or have some water that you can tape in kind of erase it with it. I'm going to do the whole edge of, uh, of a few of them in pink and then I'm going to show you how we do it and then I'll speed it up for you. 
is done. I could do all of them and go back and, and redo this, but I'm just going to do those three pieces. And then I, with nice cleaned off water brush, see I remove most of the color from there. I'm just going to take and press, push some water in there and push it forward to get that watercolory look. And again, if you get too much water on there, dab it with paper towel. See how I get that nice watercolory look so I can have a deeper color towards the bottom and the lighter color at the top, like some watercolor. Watermelon has. And then I'm just going to remove any excess. And I'm going to use a clean spot of the paper towel so I'm not transferring color from one end to another. I can go back over it and just futz with the color to get it exactly how I want it. So this one I'm going to add a little more. Then I'm going to add some water. Water drop and push it forward to get that watercolory look. Almost too much there. Too much color. Watercolory watermelon look is what I'm looking for. Try to say that five times fast. And again, I'm going to do this one. And then after I finish this section, I'm going to speed it up and finish the rest of the watermelon. So now I'm going to speed up. You can watch it in fast time. So that is how I painted that. And this can be dried. Okay, and to finish my card off, I'm going to highlight these uh, seeds and you know how the seeds are shiny. So I'm going to be using Judykin's Diamond Glaze Dimensional Adhesive. I've had this bottle maybe forever and a half, but you can use Crystal Effects from Stampin' Up. You can use, I think it's called Glassy Gloss from Ranger, Glassy Glaze, something like that. Any type of dimensional adhesive glaze that has a small nib on the end is what you're going to use here. And what you're going to do is just put a dot of this on each of those seeds, just a dot, just to make them shiny. So I'm not going to make you watch me do this, but this is the end of the tutorial, and that's how you watercolor with Distress Oxide Reinkers. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks for stopping by today.